In normal Minecraft, making an iron tool can take only 5 minutes for an experienced player and is as simple as smelting a couple ingots and forming it with your bare hands. In Minecraft's most realistic mod pack, this process is extended to at least 5 hours of locating native copper and considerate, alloying them and casting them into various tools to eventually make a bloomery, and then smithing blooms into ingots and then tools. Last time in Terra Firma Greg, I started a small village on the edge of this lake and used the tin and copper there to make bronze. After hours of mining, casting, welding, and blacksmithing that bronze, I constructed a bloomery to make an iron anvil and my first iron tool, an axe. If you haven't watched part 1, I would strongly recommend doing so since there's a lot that happened in that episode. So without further ado, let's continue. Put the ore logs in and boat. All right, we're back. I'm going to try to keep the audio balanced good this time. Because last time, at the start of the video, the game was about as loud as my voice. Yeah, it's been about five days since I last played. I'm going to try to get as much iron as possible. I think that's my next goal. Get all iron tools. Someone mentioned that I can use a Greg Tech hammer to mine. And get crushed ore. Oh yeah, I wanted to test this. So yeah, it does make crushed ore. Oh wow! Wow, that's good. And then it's better when I purify it, which I think I can do with the cauldron. Oh, okay, okay, let's do that. Unfortunately, it's not like the mining hammer, where it will mine a large area. But it's still very, very good. But yeah, look at this. I'm so rich. Okay. Yeah, it was bound to happen. Also, why did I bring a pro pick? Let's see what's around here. Oh, there's hematite. Wow. Oh, this all froze over. What? I, this... This glitch never ceases to amaze me. It just makes no sense. Yeah, I'm recording this less than 24 hours after putting out the last video, and it has already shocked me with how much... how well it's doing. I did not expect this to do well, since I just put so much effort into the other videos. And yet, this style is doing better than any other one of my videos. Wow, that's a lot of charcoal. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of base building right now. Okay, here's a nice path. Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to be making with this iron is tongs, and the second thing is going to be a shovel. And then probably a pickaxe, then a hammer. And then I'll work on armor. I want to hit... Punch, boom, perfectly forged, and draw there, well forged, I'll take it. Okay, one more, there. And now I have a bunch of really great tools. Iron knife, iron hammer, iron shovel, iron tongs, iron axe, iron pickaxe. This is really what happened once humanity discovered how to use iron. Just turned everything into iron tools. Okay, but now we have a spade, which, in case you don't know, is like the hammer, but for dirt blocks and other dirt-like blocks. So that's going to be good for mining clay. Hit, draw, bend. There. Okay, the first armor. 
The next major step of progression would be to get steel, which needs many different resources, and the most important part of that was having access to a warm climate. So I was going to make a colony in an area similar to Central Africa around 15,000 blocks south. Put this in the video. Because, what? <laughs> that was huge. This is an insane amount of copper. Whoa. Wait, I didn't even realize that. I should have turned I should have turned the iron into dust for the bloomery. I think the commenter did actually explain the dust as well, but I just assumed I would have to get a cauldron for that. I'm too used to normal Greg Tech. Yeah, there. Practically instantly melts and also instantly cools, quite annoyingly. And then, draw, draw, punch. Oh, that's an annoying recipe. Okay, and now that I have all of these bolts, it's time to do part two. Okay, so first I need to get all of these together and weld them. And instantly. Okay, second one was much easier. As easy as that. Wow, the bolts really were the hardest part. Well, I'm gonna prepare some food, and then the great journey will begin. Okay, that is plenty of food. I probably should have fertilized this, since this is actually working. And then I'm not gonna construct the ship yet, because this river seems to only flow east and I doubt it'll go south. The main point of this mission is to get Kaolinite. And then also I kind of want to establish a warm water colony where I can grow crops year round, grow warmer crops like jute and also sugarcane. And basically I've waited until the furthest possible time in progression. So yeah, we're going through an area full of chalk. This is where I get my flux. I don't ever show it on camera, though, since it's boring. You'll notice that there's no snow on the ground here, which is why I'm actually able to collect grass right now. And that's because I've generated this area before. And, yeah, snowfall can still affect it, but I'm only passing through here. But on the map, you can see um, basically what Americans think the border into Canada is like. But here we are. Off into the cold wasteland. Drinking cave water. At least it's not hard for a terraforming craft. I'm gonna make a boat. And then I need to put the bolts there and... Oh no. It needs a hammer, but I didn't bring one. Okay, so hammer in offhand. And then four bolts per... That's so expensive. I hope I never lose this. And then I think I can just put the ore locks in and boat. Here we are off into the water. Oh, there's an orca. <laughs> Speak of the devil. But yeah, now it's just gonna be hours of this. Traveling across the ocean. Oh, but I actually see land. We're approaching our first land. Or at least I see it on the map. I can't see it right now. Oh, now I can, just in the corner there. And I forgot to mention that I can put my chests here. Fuck. I accidentally pressed Q. We're gonna be in the dark for a while. I'm just hoping that this is a island or some small continent. This was a nice find at first, but now it could possibly be leaving my boat behind and walking on foot through all the snow, which would suck. Okay, this might actually save us here. I think this is back into open ocean. I wonder if I can put a torch on the boat. 
Oh, that. I was being an idiot. I can put the ore into the boat. Wait, why can't I put the other ore in? There. Now it does. Okay. And now for all those people yelling at me. I'm doing it properly now. I can move at a normal pace. Is that a volcano? That's a volcano. Yeah, you can see the magma over here. We found a volcanic island chain. Okay, I think we can get around this landmass. Oh, I think there's acacia trees there. So this will be a bit slower in the river since we're going to be going upstream. Okay, that's... I don't like that at all. Okay, this is actually an area that I could make a colony at. So you know what? I'm calling this home. Alright, the first goal with this colony is to set my spawn, because I'm gonna die otherwise. Another boar. And this next mob I'm running up to, probably another boar. Oh no, 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 no. No, oh, it's actually over. Well, shit. Oh no, what do I do? I think my best bet is just to use the, the boat I have here. Well, if I lose this canoe, that could be even worse. Also, I'm going off of the assumption that this does in fact go out into that ocean. Alright, so the plan is, once I get there, I immediately place a bed and set my spawn. And then I likely have to kill the tiger. Okay, yeah, this does eventually dump out into the ocean, just quite far north. So yeah, I had a Q&A planned, but um, there's not a lot of questions, so I can honestly just put it into this video. And I'll just answer the important questions as, as best as I can. So, I'm gonna pull one of them up here. Alright, Andre Arrow asks, is there gonna be a similar event to Chaos Tech? And yes, there will. I showed at the end of Chaos Tech a little bit of a teaser for the future, and I said that yes, there will be a Chaos Tech 2. And yeah, Chaos Tech 2 is coming, and there will be chunk claiming of some kind, because offline raids were really bad, and I will do it in a while, probably a couple of years, and I want to get, well not a couple of years, but at least a year. I want to get moderation going and stuff, so that we don't have... Chaos Tech 1 again. After E2E, will I play Divine Journey? Uh, Divine Journey, I don't like magic mods. Okay, a lot of people asked about Divine Journey. Magic mods are just not fun for me, and a lot of people are saying, oh, Divine Journey is similar to E2E. That's another reason I won't play it. I just did E2E for two years. Now I'm done. Are you quitting modded Minecraft? Well, as you can tell by the fact that I'm doing this series, absolutely not. Modded Minecraft is really fun, and another guy pointed out on the last video that just because the Greg Tech community is bad doesn't mean I can't enjoy it. Uh, now, there are some grindy parts, Regan, Regan has talked about this, uh, Greg Tech is quite grindy, so I might not get all the way to UHV in this series, but I will definitely try to get as far as I can. Also, I did promise that if I passed threefold, then I would do... GTNH. Will I play Nomi Factory? I already have. I played Nomi Factory with a friend uh, as I was making the E2E series, and we went for about 350 hours, got to UHV, and then once Greg Tech was over, we got really burnt out because uh, Greg Tech was the fun part, and then Draconic Evolution inserts itself at the very end, and now I need 1000 Draconium for everything. And that was just painful. I didn't want to upgrade my deep mob learning setup for a hundredth time just to get Ender Dragon scales, and the playthrough sort of ended after that. So, on the E2E video, someone asked why does it give Martin Cedar Pants vibes, and that is because uh, when I created my channel and started writing up scri uh, scripts for that, I watched a lot of Mart, and I still do a little bit, but. I was mainly watching the KSP series and the Factorio series because I like those the most. 
and he's my main inspiration in his Q&A video. Uh, that is where I got a lot of my motivation to actually start YouTube, because he talked about, like, it's not about if you blow up, but when. And he talks about quality over quantity is key, which is the main doctrine of my channel. So yeah, those are the important questions. Like I said, there wasn't too many. Uh, mostly because YouTube didn't push out the post that much, but also because there's just not too many important questions. Okay, here's the opening to the river. I'll have to keep a lookout for alligators, because last time that blocked our way further inland. Alright, we're back! Finally. I'm gonna immediately place this and set a respawn point. This is gonna become a nice colony. And my strategy for dealing with, uh, dealing with this is throwing as many spears as humanly possible before I die. Okay, he's hiding behind that tree. It got very dark very fast. This is terrifying. There you are. Okay, he can climb. I'm so glad I made this. And I'm missing every shot. I have very few of these things. Well, not really. Oh, they run away when they're that low. I'm pretty sure that's still a tiger. I think I'm safe. Okay. Okay, I think we have everything. I think I'm safe. I'm gonna get back to the camp and put some things away, and then we can go back to building up this colony. Alright, what should I name the area? I think I'll just go with something very basic. Like any good, any good European colonizer, I'll just slap a new in front of a different name. I'm gonna make a fire here. And then I'm gonna cook some of my food on here. Uh, and I think loam bricks look quite nice, at least for flooring. I actually used it in the thumbnail of the last video. And what's this? Olive? No, peach. And then put... Oh, that's really cool. That's actually really cool. Fuck. Not again, dude! Yeah, it, it has longer range than me. Literally, it's literally the guy. I should have marked him. Uh, what do we name him? Well, I said it's literally the guy, so it's gonna be the guy. Capitalized for proper nouns. <laughs> Strategic sleeping. Uh, next time I'll go over there and grab some flux stones and then start making mortar to build up this colony. So yeah, why I'm building up this colony is because I do want to have a cool base wherever I go. I want to have all the resources I need always at this colony and then also grow, grow things year round. So I basically need a second base. So that's why we're building this area up into a new base. A lot of people were wondering where the river currents were coming from, what mod created them. Every world generation thing you see is terra firma craft. The only non terra firma craft world generation is the terra firma craft add on that adds great tech ore veins. Actually, wow, this is a very rich beach. So let's turn this all into flux. And then I think we can head home. And then, wait. Hey, what's that? There's smoke over there, hold on. Is there other players here? There's like a base here. I wonder if they have anything. Okay. Ah, uh, I, I don't think, I don't think they're friendly. Oh, there's a rat here, what the hell? they have anything? I, I don't think I should be here. I, I should not be here. 
Let's just leave. Uh, maybe we should go back and investigate that later. Yeah, but there are two players. You can see the white dots on the map. That is weird. I am stronger than them. They only seem to have, like, stone tools. Actually, their base was made of a lot of bricks. I wonder if I could steal some. That actually work. Hold on. We're gonna go on a bit of a heist. See if the natives, as I'm gonna call them... Oh, maybe that's not a good look. Though I guess I've been making colony jokes, so, so I guess I'm a colonizer now. It looks like there's a staircase there, or some pathway. And I saw the chest there, so I think I can just go up that staircase straight to the chest and try to take any mortar or anything they have. Uh, okay, my, my boat's leaving. Whatever, that's, that's not part of the mission. They have flux? Okay, uh, jug. Take their straw, sugarcane, go. Do they know? I don't think they know. They are at the base. Two white dots. Okay, mission success. Now I have to get back. To get back home as fast as possible because it's becoming dark again and this river is a nightmare to traverse at night. No, oh, we really didn't get much. The sugarcane's nice, but they didn't have any seeds. Okay, put in this area. Okay, so this is our home now. Now that I've made my colony, it is time for the dreaded search for kaolinite. Kaolinite is a special clay that can only be found in tropical rainforest climates, in highlands, plateaus, or mountains, which is a really rare combination, since most highlands will have lower rainfall. This one type of clay haunts the dreams of every modern terra firma craft player, and I need it to make steel, and more importantly for this episode, a crucible. We will find kaolinite eventually, okay? The temperature is getting really, really high. So cool. Thanks, game. And for a third time in this trip, it is becoming night. Every bit of water I find is like eight miles beneath the ground. All the rivers seem to come from there. Oh, and we have high precipitation, really high. Field of magnetite here. The code that made the torches smoothly light up areas seems to no longer be working. I'm getting chased by an alligator. Yep. Oh. Spent five minutes not looking on the map for yellow dots. And then the moment I do, I see one literally just tailing me. And now I have to walk 2,000 blocks just to get to the promised land, which is very likely not what I want. And then another 800 blocks after that to get my stuff back. This is a nightmare. This area is just dry. It's only dry. There's also a hot spring here. Haven't seen hot springs the whole playthrough. Those just regenerate your health. Hope that night doesn't come too quickly. Yeah, I'm definitely only going to get my stuff once it's daytime, so that the alligator is sleeping. Okay, I see the alligator on the map. So now the whole ocean is loaded. Just takes so long. I guess this is why people don't make series on Terra Firmacraft. Probably why most of them end, too. Oh, now I have to travel through this massive fucking swamp at night. Oh, my boat did actually stay here. Good. Oh, and of course, now that I have access to my bed, the sun starts rising. 
a battlefield here. He's moving. Okay, well, he's dead. <laughs> Doesn't matter whatever he was doing. So yeah, something I want to mention is I am now recording this right after the video completely blew up, got 100,000 views while I was just sleeping. I have to say, that is actually crazy. I didn't realize this format would, would do so well. Like, I was gonna use it either way, it's fun. Oh, there's a sheep here. It's fun to make, so, well, more fun than the other format, which I did like, but just not as much. So this has been really great, and you guys like it. So I'm gonna try to use this format as much as I can. Something uh, very few people know about me, which is kind of annoying, is that I am very much a Christian. I pray every night in editing and recording that the video will do well. And obviously that has... Obviously God has helped, because there is no way a channel like mine should be doing as well as it is. Yeah, but with this format, it's, it's quite unique to make. I have absolutely no structure. Some people probably think I have a structure when making my videos. No. This one's even less structured than my voiceover videos, because those ones I'd write up a script, voice over it, have some ideas on the script. But in this format, I just... I just start editing the... I start editing the footage, and then write new voiceover pieces to add as I go. My boat is broken free, it's on the river, it is <laughs> continuing down, uh, how am I supposed to catch up to it? There it is. We're already about at the distance of the promised land, so this boat is really fast. Alright, and I'm pretty sure, yes, we are flowing with the current, which is going to be very fast. Oh, here we go! Realistic pack still has broken boat physics. We're still at high precipitation, but not high enough. I keep saying that, it's it's never enough precipitation. I'm just gonna go straight south from here. So then after taking a detour 6,000 blocks south of the equator and then into a mountain range 4,000 blocks out west, I found a new island. Whoa, okay, 250 millimeters, we got the right idea. So I just got the driest continent ever, this is what I'm supposed to be dealing with. I kinda wanna kill a tiger. Luckily we have a portable bed. Okay, they do wake up. Oh no they don't. Easy game. <laughs> wait, is that Capoc? 297, wait, we've actually done it. 300. Tropical rainforest. We've done it. So we've definitely got the rainfall covered. We just need height now. And then are those acacia trees? They better not be. Oh, they are. <laughs> you know what? I hate acacia trees. I really do. They're bad. They're annoying. They've tortured me for too long. I think it's time we get rid of all the acacia on Eden Island. Burn these all. Actually, these are gonna start hitting the palm trees. If I remember correctly, 80 is the number, and we're here. I'm pretty sure Kaolinite is now allowed to spawn where I am. In plateaus, old mountains, and highlands. I don't think we're any of those. Wait, plateaus over here. Just not quite right. Yep. 293 now. So precipitation gets high near the volcanoes, but then the plateaus end. Oh, it's gonna be really annoying. This is quite a nice area though, if you ignore the deadly crocodile there and there. Okay, I wanted a third one for comedic value, I think there is one. Whoa, those are massive guys. Hold on, I know these things. These things drop blubber. I'm gonna go inland and hope that there is rainfall. We're at 265.1. I'm gonna go over here. 267. Hold on, that's promising. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go all the way upstream through here and then I want to use this part of the river because I don't think this will go anywhere. Okay, 290. Hold on a second, we might actually have it. 296! 
we're so close. Oh, but the plateau biome almost ends here. There's no fucking way. Does it seriously end here? There's a horse there. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. This whole session has just been... Oh, there could be Kalanite here. 280, oh. There could be Kalanite here. 290, oh. There could be Kalanite here. 295, oh. We were literally five millimeters away. Five millimeters of annual rainfall. Come on. 296.7. It is slowly going up in this direction. The highlands continue here. Yes! Yes, that's Kalanite! Those flowers, that's Kalanite! We did it! Here it is. Kowlin Clay, finally. This doesn't look like too much. Hopefully, uh, hopefully there is more. Oh, there's more, okay. Okay, this is huge. Yeah, this is what we're looking for. That other one was a fluke. We actually have a sustainable, large source of kaolinite. So the next thing I needed might become the most intimidating of them all. I need graphite. Graphite is a really rare rock that only comes in diamond veins, which are normally really rare, but with the GT add-on that makes everything work, it becomes far worse, as it can only spawn in Gabbro, which is only found really deep on- Wait, no! No way! No f***ing way! What?! This is a diamond vein, with exposed graphite, <laughs> what? I swear I'm not cheating. There's just graphite here. And there's diamonds as well. Yeah, I saw the diamonds and I, I realized that this was not a normal coal vein. So they kept some of the normal ore generation from TFC and made it so that these veins can only spawn in Gabbro. But they must have forgotten to put the height limit on it. Okay, we're just gonna go right back home, and we're gonna- we're gonna make a crucible. Here's some more. I'll keep some of the gabbro, just because that marks our success, and we spent three days mining here. Yeah, so we accomplished a lot in this one- in this one trip. We got all the graphite we need, we got all the kalanite we needed, we got all of the blubber we'll need for a kayak, don't know what I'm going to use the kayak for, because I do have to bring this rowboat back home, but it'll be useful for for shorter travels, and also I'll probably use it to get back here. Right, so now we have to go all the way upstream from here, all the way to the new Hecuba colony. This is going to take a while. Wait, there's... There's a white dot at my base. Hold on, wait. Oh no, I angered the tr the The natives I stole from them. They found my base. Kill him, kill him! Okay, he's dead. Get the other guy. Okay, that actually wasn't too bad. Oh, I'm at 70 health though, that guy, that second guy got me. Okay, is our base fine? What did they steal? They broke some of my crops, the wheat's all done, but they broke some of it. After that attack by the locals, I naturally dealt with the situation by running away. In reality, I had no plans on staying any longer, and I had spent an in-game seven months on that continent, which was half of my playtime, so I got together everything valuable that they could steal out of my base, and left. Yeah, I'll take any jute I see along the way, like this little bit. But yeah, off we go. There's gonna be snow on the trees and shit for a while, but it'll melt slowly. It's just that it hasn't been simulating temperature this whole time. That would be really laggy. Look at how far we've traveled, though. We went all the way over here. 
So it's been officially one year in-game since we started this playthrough. Because I'm pretty sure time starts at June. But maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's been longer than that. Wait, I think we saw this river, this... Wait, no, we had one in the south, but not this exact one. I don't think we've seen this, this goofy-ass river. You can see all the snow everywhere, like on that hill, just grass popping into existence. Right, so let's get everything started up here. Light all the torches. Some of them are still on. I guess that's just from chunks being unloaded. And the garlic's all done. Yeah, all of our farming is going great. Yeah, some other projects I want to work on. I had a really cool idea to build a bridge here. Because our base right now is not very flat, and that is not good for Greg Tech. But I'm thinking if I can get a bridge up to that rock specifically, starting here, then I can have the rest of my base up there. That's going to be my machinery area. I just completely forgot where I put it. Here. Two large waterproof hides, and kayaks are cheap after that. I can just make a kayak. As easy as that. If I get a kayak paddle, oh, that's fast! Kind of looks goofy since I'm not even moving the paddle. I'll have to use up that food somehow. Don't know how I'm gonna do it. And I'll keep all these vessels relatively easy to reach in the kitchen, which we're gonna build, but that needs clay, so we're gonna get clay. This clay is going to be for the oven, it's going to be for new mold, it's going to be used for pots, it's going to be used for fire clay, most importantly. Spades are so good. So that's insulated, and then I can get a countertop there. So this one's going to be our pot, and then the other one's going to be our grill. I don't know why I'd have a grill, but might as well get all the cooking in here. This is starting to actually kind of look nice. I'll just need a wall now. Okay, so we do that, and then we add clay, and then we add a brick, and it's a tile finish. And I can turn this into a tile oven, but what if it looks bad? It might look bad. I think it looks bad. Cool. Am I able to get it off? I don't think I am. We're gonna have to live with the tile then. I need the kaolinite dust, and I just remembered how annoying it is to cook all the kaolinite dust. So, kaolin clay needs to be heated to a temperature of faint red, which is honestly quite easy to do. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Like, I could even do this over a fire. I think I'll just use a pit kiln, because the pit kiln ignores how long it takes to heat up. And then I can wash this graphite dust by putting it in the water here. 40 graphite dust. So I need to grind down the graphite dust now in a corn. So we're gonna have more of a building later. But for now, this is all we have for our kitchen. These are all done. And they do have all that kaolinite powder. So let's cool it off. That's already exactly enough, okay. It is ridiculous just how expensive the blast furnace is. I have to get all that cowl and clay. Apparently what I got was not enough. I think what I have is enough for steel, but... Uh, we do have enough for 10 though, which means getting the crucible, which is the focus of this episode. I can worry about the rest later. Oh, that's so expensive. Okay, I should probably not do that.
blindly crafting something with fire clay. If I screw up, I lose everything. Oh, hold on. Crucible's done. But the crucible allows you to put nine items into here at the same time. And it heats them up very quickly. Like, look at that. And not only that, in here, you may notice that there is a ton of space up there. That space is for the menu when there's actually liquids in the crucible. Uh, this thing is very, very good for alloying. And I'm in one playthrough, I waited specifically for this before making a bloomery just because I wanted this for bronze. But it really shines with complex with complex materials like red steel. Now that I have a crucible, I have to end the episode here. I had some other stuff like a kitchen and a coke oven planned, but this video is already over 40 minutes long and I will have to end it here. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.